Hi, my name is Ale, and in this video, I will be sharing five useful Xcode tips and tricks that can help you make the best use of your time and work more effectively as you develop apps. The first trick I want to share is actually in the simulator. If you're building an app that uses the photo library, it might be worth knowing that you can drag and drop photos or videos into the simulator. Now, when testing your app, you will be able to use these new assets in your library. So let me show you an example. I'll open the photo library in my simulator and I'm just going to drag and drop one picture that I have saved on my desktop. And now I'm going to go to an app that uses a photo library. And so when I select add photo, you can see that the photo that I added to the library is now visible and you can use it in your app. The second tip I want to share with you is about renaming code. Renaming a class or a variable can become a tedious task if you've already used it in several places throughout your code. Thankfully, Xcode has a rename feature to make our lives easier. Let's say you want to rename a class. You can easily rename it everywhere it is used by pressing the command key on your keyboard, clicking on the class you want to rename, and then selecting Rename from the menu options. Let me show you an example so you can see how easy it is. So let's say I want to rename this Bitcoin, pr Bitcoin Prize View Model class. So all I'll have to do is press the command key on my keyboard and then click on the class. Then I can select Rename, and as you can see, Xcode will show me all the places where this class name is used. So all I'll have to do is modify the class name to include the new name. So let's say I just want to call this Bitcoin View Model. I can change the name and then click Rename, and now my class is renamed everywhere it is used. The third tip I want to share with you is also in the simulator and is related to animations. Testing animations can be tricky. Thankfully, Xcode has a feature that slows down animations in the simulator. That way you can see exactly how your views are moving or changing. To enable this feature, you simply need to run your app and once in the simulator, click debug in the top menu and then select slow animations. So for example, in a previous video, I showed you how to use a rotation effect and we also implemented a change in background color that fades from one color to another. So if we go to the debug menu and we select slow animations, now we're going to be able to see how the views are changing very slowly. Great, so as you can see, what the color uh, fades from uh, black to white and then you can also see how the view rotates and we can do that again great for the fourth trick let's talk about documentation source code documentation helps explain what the code written does and how it behaves this documentation is useful not only for people who are not familiar with the code but also for the code author's future self Xcode lets you use the following shortcut to immediately generate documentation for a method. You can use the keys option, command, and slash, and Xcode will add the documentation format to your method. So for example, let's say I want to add documentation to this add label method. What I'll do is press option, command, slash, and as you can see, Xcode starts to add a part of my documentation. So I can add a description to my method. Now I can also describe the parameters in my method. Now, as you can see, our method is documented and if you press the option key on your keyboard and then hover over your method, you'll see that you'll have this question mark. And if you click on it, you can see the documentation for your method. And you can also use this option and click functionality wherever your method is called. So in this case, I call at label under save image so I can press the option key and then click, and I'll also get the documentation for my method. My fifth and final tip will help you for view debugging. Seeing your views, frames, and hierarchies in detail can be very helpful when debugging the UI of your app. This can be especially useful when a view you expect to see is hidden or mispositioned for some reason. So let's run this app that I've built. As you can see, we have a table view, and then we also have different tabs. And in each uh, cell of the table, we have some text and buttons. So what I'll do now is I'm going to show you the view hierarchy debugging. So first you have to run your app. And then while your app is running, you can click this button here that says debug view hierarchy. 
Now it may take some time, it's capturing the user interface, but once it's done, you can see all of the frames in your views and you can also click and drag to see how views are positioned on top of the others. When debugging the view hierarchy, you may also sometimes see these exclamation points and if you hover over them, you can see an error message. In this case, there's something wrong with the height of my UI labels. So um, now I can go back to my code and fix those errors to make sure that my UI behaves as expected. So those are the five tips that I wanted to share with you. I hope you found them useful and I hope that they will help you when building your own apps. If you want to learn more about iOS development with Swift and SwiftUI, make sure to subscribe to my channel as I'll be posting new videos very soon.